Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today's video also we are going to continue in our lab calculation series and today we will see how can we dilute different types of stock solution to get our desired solution. So we will see different type of stock solution dilutions in this video. Now when you are working with stock solution it can be expressed or it can be having any of these following type of concentration. Say for example we might have a stock solution which has the concentration expressed in terms of molar example 5 molar annuit solution it can be expressed in terms of percentage like 50 percent annuit solution or it can be sometimes expressed uh, you know the level of concentration might be expressed say for example when you're working with certain buffers it will be uh, shown the concentration will be given as 10 times or 10x buffer or 100 times concentrated buffer and you have to dilute it to one time or 1x buffer or it can be any other measurable uh, quantity say for example when you deal with DNA generally we express the concentration like uh, microgram per ml or nanogram per microliter now it doesn't matter how your stock solution has expressed the concentration what calculation we are going to uh, see today holds good for any type of stock solutions so let's begin today's video now to understand how to do the dilution we will take one simple example after that we will take example of each of these type of uh, stock solution and try to uh, calculate and see how we can make the dilutions. This example says make 100 microliter of working solution having 1x concentration from the stock buffer of 10 times concentrated buffer. Alright so you need a final quantity of 100 ml you have 10 times concentrated buffer and you need to make it to 1x all right so the first thing that you need to understand when you have to do dilution how much of a dilution is needed now looking at this since these are easy and you know good numbers to understand from 10 to 1 that means 10 fold dilution is there right so this is the dilution factor that is tenfold but how can I get this for you know numbers that are not these easy so I can get my dilution factor if I take my stock concentration that is 10x divided by the final concentration what I need this step here gives me the dilution factor alright so here it will be 10 so the dilution factor when you take the stock concentration divided by the final concentration that you need gives you the dilution factor. So I need to dilute my stock 10 folds or 10 times to get my desired concentration. Alright, now once we have established the dilution factor, next thing we need it in what quantity? 100 microliter. So how can I get that? When you take the quantity that you need, the final quantity here, I need 100 microliter and divide that by 10 because if you look at this 10 fold, that means it is one part in 10. Okay. If I take one part in 10, that means it is 10 times diluted, right? Here I need 100, right? Instead of 10, I'm looking for 100. So I'll take 10th part in this 100 microliter that would give me the amount of stock that I need to take right that would be 10 microliter right so when you take your final volume that you need and divide that by your dilution factor you get the amount that is needed to be taken off your stock so when you take 10 microliter of your 10x concentrated buffer and make it up to how much you need 100 that means take 90 microliter of distilled water you get 100 microliter of 1x buffer all right now this looks little complicated wouldn't it be easier if we just put this thing in terms of formula I hope you understood the logic behind it you know how to get the dilution factor why it is important once you get the dilution factor you need to go ahead look your final quantity take your dilution factor you will get the amount of the stock that you need to take 
Now let's make it more simpler and put it in terms of formula and see how it looks. So look at this particular step over here. This is the step that gave me the answer, right? What was that? I took the final amount that I need and divided by dilution factor. So let's just put it. When we took the final volume that we need, that is 100 microliter, divide that by dilution factor, that was 10, we got the amount that we need, the volume that is needed of the stock. Now the dilution factor, let's make it more simpler. How did we get this dilution factor here? This was the step. I got my dilution factor when I took the stock concentration and divide that by final concentration or the working concentration we need. So let's put this over here and make it more simple. So this is how it looks final volume needed divided by stock concentration by final concentration right that was your dilution factor now mathematically you know you have a fraction underneath a fraction you can take this and multiply flip it and multiply with this so let's do that all right so i got final volume needed multiplied by final concentration divided by the stock concentration i just simply took this step over here so the volume that you need can be calculated following this formula. All right, so when you will be following any protocol or you know, you'll be referring any paper, you will be given these three values for sure, right? You will know these three values. If you know these values, you can find out how to dilute. Say for example, over here, the final volume needed was 100 microliter. The stock concentration was 10x and the final was 1x, right? So you put all three values and you would get the answer that is 10 microliter. Let's put it and see are we getting the same answer or not. Final volume needed is 100 microliter. I would suggest you always write the units whatever you're dealing with. The reason you will see once we solve different kind of uh, problems. And the final concentration or the working concentration required is 1x divided by the stock concentration that is 10x so simple 10 microliter that is what my unit is right so i need 10 microliter of stock and i'll make it up to final quantity is 100 with distilled water so 90 microliter of distilled water we got the same answer so just you can simplify this whole thing using this formula once you know this formula you can pretty much do any kind of stock solution dilution now look at this formula carefully does it remind you of something let me tell you what look at this does this look familiar c1 v1 equal to c2 v2 i think many of us are familiar with this when it comes to dilution right so c1 over here is concentration of stock solution v1 is the volume of stock solution what is needed that is the unknown that is what we are looking for C2 is the final concentration or working concentration that we have and the V2 is final volume that we need. So here V1 is unknown, right? So you take V1, so V1 would equal to C2 V2 divided by C1. That is what we derived over here. Final concentration into final volume needed divided by stock concentration. The reason I uh, directly did not give you this uh, formula and we derive this is because if you know this logically how it has come this becomes very easy and interesting to uh, work with the problem with me when I used to deal with this uh, equation was I used to get confused which side is the stock solution side and which is the working solution side so I'll just give you one trick uh, to remember this equation in simple ways you'll always look for a volume that you need to take from a stock right so that is always your unknown you need to find the volume that you need to take from your stock that would equal to both the final quantities on the top when i say final quantity you have concentration and volume only right so final concentration and final volume on the top divided by the stock concentration now that we have established the equation that we need to do the calculation, let us take few examples of different types of stock solution and see how you can do the calculation. Make 2 liters of 1x gel running buffer from 20x stock solution of the buffer. Now 
what our uh, formula says both the final quantities on the top divided by the stock concentration so the final quantities means you need the final concentration and the final volume that you're looking for so the final concentration over here is 1x that's what i need as i said always put units that you're working with so the final concentration into the final volume that we need that is 2 liters divided by the stock concentration that is 20x so that equals to 0 0.1 liter of my stock liter because that is what my unit is in so 0 0.1 liter of stock buffer or other words 100 ml right 0 0.1 liter is 100 ml 100 ml of the stock buffer we need to take and how much we need to make it to 2 liters so make it up to 2 liters by adding distilled water so you would add 1.9 liter that is a remaining amount to make it 2 liter of distilled water this was uh, pretty easy let's take one more example here our solution is in the percentage doesn't matter you know we are going to follow the same formula so we need to make 100 ml of 10 percent ethanol from a stock solution of 70 percent ethanol easy put both the final quantities on the top final quantities final volume and final concentration so 100 ml as i said please put your units into 10 percent that is my final concentration i'm looking for and my stock concentration is 70 percent to 14.3 ml of my stock ml because my unit is in ml and make this up to 100 ml because that is my final quantity that I need so add 87.7 ml of distilled water that will make up to 100 ml of 10% ethanol from 70% ethanol let's take different example make 10 ml of 200 millimolar working solution from 0.5 molar KMnO4 solution so the uh, stock solution concentration is in molar it is expressed in molar so from 0.5 molar we need to make 200 millimolar so let's take our formula and put the values both the final volumes on the top final volume is 10 ml and 200 millimolar as I said put all the units that are given in the question divided by the stock concentration that is 0.5 molar the reason that i said you know write the unit is because when you're dealing with the unit say for example you're dealing with molarity over here the unit should be in the same form say for example here one unit is in millimolar and the other one is expressed as molar so they are not same you need to convert either of this unit and make it similar otherwise your answer will be wrong so either you make 200 millimolar and convert it in the molar or take 0.5 molar and make it in millimolar so if you want to convert millimolar into molar what you need to do you just simply divide this value by thousand and if you want to convert this 0.5 molar into millimolar you will multiply it by thousand right so let's try both the ways and see whether we are getting the same answer or not if I want to convert this molar into millimolar I will multiply this with thousand so what I get is 500 millimolar the answer is 4 ml of stock I need and I need to make up to how much 10 ml that is the quantity we need so I'll add 6 ml water and I'll make up to 10 ml now we converted molar into millimolar let's do the other way around and see are we getting the same answer or not i want to convert this 200 millimolar in molar i need to divide this by thousand so what i get is 0.2 molar divided by 0.5 molar so if you simplify this you are going to get 4 as an answer so 4 ml of my stock and make it up to 10 ml the same thing right so make sure when you uh, put your units they are expressed in the same form okay if it is not convert any of the unit and make it same very very important all right let's move on make 20 ml of 20 millimolar hcl solution from 5 molar concentrated hcl all right so the same thing take our formula final units on the top final units are 20 ml that is the volume needed to 20 millimolar is my final concentration that is needed divided by the stock concentration 5 molar 
again the same thing units are not matching so convert either of the units and then do the calculation so i converted molar into millimolar as i said if you want to convert molar into millimolar you need to multiply with 1000 so 5000 millimolar you can do the other way around and check uh, whether you're getting the same answer or not so if you simplify this you would get 0.08 ml ml because my unit is in ml so 0.08 ml of stock or the concentrated hcl we need to take and we need the final quantity that is uh, 20 ml so make it up to 20 ml with distilled water so you will add 19.92 ml of distilled water compare 20 microliter of 0.5 nanogram per microliter DNA from DNA solution having 1.8 microgram per ml concentration. Alright, let's take our uh, formula, final quantities on the top that is 20 microliter to 0.5 as I said, please write the units, nanogram per microliter divided by the stock concentration that is 1.8 microgram per ml all right look at the units units does not match but in this case what I'm going to show you over here is in case of DNA nanogram per microliter is same as microgram per ml and how let me show you so what I said is one microgram per ml is as same as 1 nanogram per uh, microliter it is equivalent let's see how if you say 1 microgram per ml 1 microgram is nothing but in other terms 1000 nanogram I'm just expressing it in a different way 1 microgram is 1000 nanogram similarly 1 ml is what 1000 microliter right now both the sides the numbers are same so I can divide both the sides by 1000 so this 1000 is cut and, and this 1000 is cut so I get 1 nanogram per microliter right so that's what happened 1 microgram per ml is equivalent to 1 nanogram per microliter so in case of DNA when you have units like nanogram per microliter and microgram per milliliter you need not convert the units because they are equivalent so you can directly just simplify this 5.56 microliter because that's what my unit is in of my stock or the DNA solution and I need final quantity of 20 microliters so make it up to 20 by adding the remaining amount that is 14.44 microliter of buffer or distilled water whatever you need to add right so that's all for DNA this was a little difference over here I hope this was not uh, confusing so that's all if you know this uh, one formula you know how we have derived it this was just for the information but if you know only this one formula doesn't matter any kind of stock solution that you're dealing with you can calculate and make any kind of concentration and any kind of volume that you may require so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning